We're almost there. The season's almost here, and it's time to look at what has happened with fantasy rankings and fantasy ADPs over the last seven days. Who are the risers? Who are the fallers? What does it matter? Does it even matter? Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble, on TikTok at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. First of all, sorry, the uh, mock draft fourteenth pick. If you listened on audio, you don't know what I'm talking about. But if you did watch it on YouTube, something happened, and I don't know what it is. The draft room, which I was had screen sharing up on the broadcast didn't update. It just froze. I, I don't know why. I've never had that happen before. It's not like the whole thing froze because my head was moving around and talking and I was reacting to pics, but you couldn't see them. So I apologize completely for that. You can still hear it, what pics go through my voice, but I know that's not the same thing. So again, I just apologize. We are going to have more mocks this week. I'm not going to redo the 14, pick 14 one. Um, just that the time is just going to run out on me with how much other stuff I've got to do. But just be aware that, that I am aware that that happened and I do apologize. And I don't really know why it happened. And I will be looking into it and hopefully, hopefully we don't have something like that happen again. A reminder, tomorrow, Monday in the States, 4.30 p.m. Eastern in the States, live on YouTube. Three hours answering whatever questions you've got. Me and a bunch of other analysts are going to be on here. We're going to be talking, answering, chatting, whatever's going on. You jump in, ask your questions, and we do it. 4.30 p.m. Monday, October 16th, live on YouTube. All right, let's do our standard thing. It's Monday Movers. We're looking at ranking and ADP changes. Let's look at what I have done over on Basketball Monster. What have been the big changes? I have moved Bob Covington significantly up. 101 spots and 104 in minus one rankings. Remember, I do not move players in a rank board. I do not drag and drop. I do not change their number next to their name to rank them. That's not how I do any of this. And frankly, I think a lot of it, if you do do that, it's a disingenuous way of providing fantasy ranks. Because you've got to have something backing it up. What I have done here is given Covington, who I... The Clippers have 12 rotation players, right? That's This is a problem. They have 12 rotation players. I thought Covington, based on last season, would be a chance to not be in the rotation. But there is some talk from Clippers people that he has a chance to start. I don't know whether he will, but if he does start, then he is a 12-team league guy. That is why I'm taking him in round 11 or round 12 of drafts, just in case. Because instead of taking Kevin Herter there, who's got no upside to be a top 70 player, Bob Covington does. It might be a 10% chance. I don't care. I'm just going to take that crack after I saw one big game from him and then I heard from the Clippers guys. Now, of course, they might put old mate Marcus Morris back in there and Covington goes back to being nothing, goes back to dust and we drop him. But I've upped his projections. And the same goes with Bilal Kalabli, who I didn't expect, again, talking to Wizards people all through the offseason. They thought, no, he's not going to be much of a part of the rotation. He'll you know sit behind Kispert and Avdir. He'll play a little bit, but he's not going to be a big role guy. Well, he started two preseason games. He's looked awesome defensively, and I think he might start opening night. And I've bumped him 144 spots, 137 in minus one ranks. And much like Bob Covington, we take him in the last rounds. It might not work out. He might Isaac Okoro us to seven points. But he also might get Matisse Leibel 1.8 steals and 0.9 blocks with two or three assists. So we take him. We don't know how it's going to work out. But this is the things that you take out of preseason. You don't take out of preseason necessarily that someone's shooting poorly or the minutes are down or that someone's gone crazy like Peyton Pritchard necessarily. We'll go, oh, what's the role? Because Pritchard is going to have a role. He's not going to shoot 60% from the field or Kaminga's not going to shoot 65% and be the leading scorer and minutes uh, guy on the Warriors. That's not realistic. But Calabali starting is. And that's what we take out of it. I have bumped Chet Holmgren up as well. 
He's gone up 16 spots, 15 in minus one. I like to be relatively conservative on rookies. And I was with Chet. I was only playing a bit like 30, 31 minutes a night. Lower usage, sort of tempered the block numbers. But he's, he's looked great. Like, honestly, he's looked awesome in preseason. And with how comfortable he looks on the court, I had to bump some of his numbers up. So I did. So there you go. He's in that sort of fourth roundish sort of range now for 12-team leagues. Taylor Horton Tucker, I've bumped up as well. 63 spots and 62 in minus one. You know my thoughts on Horton Tucker if you've been watching the mock drafts. I think he is probably the fifth best option for them at guard. I don't think he is very good, but they have started him every preseason game. And that means something. I am not investing anything outside of a bench spot on him. I'm not Jalen Smithing my way to taking him in round nine. Because I believe that Horton Tucker is bad and he will lose that job very quickly. But at the moment, he is starting. So if he's there in the last rounds, you flyer, you throw away uh, rounds, let's grab him and see what happens. I do not think, if I'm going to plant my flag, I'm going to say November 15th, Keontae George will be starting for the Jazz at point guard. So I'm all for grabbing him. But I didn't really ever think that Horton Tucker, who opted into only an $11 million player option because he had no free agency market at all, would be able to win that job. It makes no sense to me. I watch him play and I still go, really? We're doing this, yeah? What? That's how I view that. But it's happening. I'm still being very tempered in my expectations, but it is happening. And the next one is Jeremy Sohan, who's up 27 spots, 31 in minus one. He started a point guard last game. Will he start there next game? I don't know. But the fact that they ran with that in the preseason, that means I bumped up his assist rate. I gave a little bit more security to his minutes. I was He was a guy that was always appearing around the 130 marks for me in drafts. I'd occasionally draft him round 13. Now he's around 11 guy, maybe back in round 10. But it might not work. They might start Trey Jones and bring Sohan off the bench and start Keldon Johnson. That is still a possibility. But I would say the likelihood of Sohan starting and playing 30 minutes a night has increased significantly. Therefore, I increased his rankings. And I would say it's also pretty much set that Josh Okoge is going to be the fifth starter in Phoenix. So he's moved up 42 spots. This does not mean, these 42 spots for Okoge does not mean that he is a 12-team draftable player. But there was debate whether it was going to be him or Grayson Allen or Keita Bates-Diop or even a Yuta Watanabe. But it doesn't appear it's going to be any of those guys. Okoge is going to be one of those players. And remember, the most variable category week to week, day to day, is steals. The category that tends to be the most abundant on the waiver wire is steals. When you are doing punt categories, the one that is often up for battle each week is steals. The Suns have a very good schedule week one. What does Josh Okoge do? Steals. So, in week one, you might add Okoge, you might get five steals out of him. So I've bumped him up with a bit more security in his role, and he might be, just for that purpose, for week one at least, an option for us. Even in 12-team leagues, maybe. Not draftable, I wouldn't think. But you also can use your last draft pick on, hey, who would be a priority waiver wire ad for me for week one? Who's a guy that I'd look at? Who's got the good quality game schedule? Who's got the volume game schedule? You can do that with someone like a Josh Okogi because he, I think, is going to lock in as that starter. Today's episode is brought to you by the Game Time app. You should not have to worry about buying tickets to your next big event. It doesn't matter what that event is. It's a sporting event comedy show, musical theater, concert. Game Time's got tickets for all of those things. They've got easy to find, or it's easy to find, and buy tickets to whatever event is in your area. And when you go in there onto the app, you can just see what the view looks like directly from your seat. We all want to know that. Like, what am I going to actually see when I go to the show? Oh, there you go. Game Time's got me sorted. It's fantastic. It's the only ticketing app that gives you that complete peace of mind with your purchase as well. See the view from your seat before you buy. You know what you're going to get when you arrive. The all-in prices, which is a fantastic feature, shows you that total upfront, so you know you're getting a great deal without hidden fees. You don't go in there and go, okay, cool, I've bought that for 50 bucks, and it's like, well, here's 2% processing, 3.8 transaction fee, 4.2 environmental fee. Uh, man, now it cost me 80, what is this? Those numbers may not add up, but you know what I mean. All-in pricing, bang, there is the price. You know what you're paying, straight away. Easy. One of the most simple things that a company can do, but most of the others fail. Game Time does not. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code LOCKEDONNBA for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-B-A for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. 
So that will bring us now to look at um, who I've dropped down on Basketball Monster in the ranks. And I've got six names to talk about here. I will go into them and explain why I've dropped them down. And the number one player I've dropped down, 21 spots in minus one rankings, is Tyrese Maxey. Why, Josh? Well, I had gone in with my projections, and I was pretty clear about this over on Basketball Monster. I'm going to try and make these projections under the assumption that Harden isn't there. So we'll give usage and assist bumps to Maxey, usage bumps to Harris, a little bit of playing time bumps to Melton and, and um, uh, Beverly and Springer and these sort of guys without knowing who comes back for Harden. So we couldn't go full, well, Harden's not there. Let's just bump everyone through the roof. Right, so I gave them all a little bit of boosts. But we're at a stage now where we're 10, 11 days away from the start of the season and Harden still plays for Philadelphia. So I had to bring everyone back down to balance it. So Maxi's dropped 21 spots. That's to me the difference between where Maxi sits if Harden plays and where Maxi sits if Harden doesn't play. It doesn't look like they're getting back any sort of equivalent player to Harden in a deal. So we can have confidence that when we draft Maxi and he falls to the 60s a lot, that we probably get a top 40, 45 player in the uh, situation where Harden's dealt. But when you go to look at the projections, you will see that his numbers have dropped, and that is the reason. I dropped KJ Martin down, 92 spots. I thought that he had a chance to start, and the word out of the Clippers is that he is far behind. So he likely isn't out of the rotation. You've got Batum, Morris, you've got Covington, you've got Mann, who are all ahead of him. So, yeah, he's out. Oshai Baji. I have been very much on record, shout out to Taylor Horton Tucker, of telling you that I do not think Oshay Abaji is a very good player. I do not think he's a good fantasy player at all. But my understanding early in the offseason was that he was in line to start. He is not in line to start. He is not even remotely close to it at the moment. He just seems like an afterthought on this team. He's playing limited minutes. Remember, the only time he played well last season was when everybody was out. And even then, it wasn't particularly strong. And at the moment, he just doesn't seem like he's likely to start. So I went into the Jazz projections, and I dropped his playing time down. There's just too many guys there, and he, he's not remotely close to him. So he's down, like 73 spots. You weren't drafting him in 12s anyway, maybe with a last-round pick, which I did in one league, and then immediately dropped him. But that's it. Corey Kispert down 41 spots, 46 in minus one. Like Abaji, Kispert is a bad fantasy category league player. He put up good numbers, like Abaji, at the end of last season when everybody was out and he was just getting tons of shots. But he doesn't get any rebounds, assists, steals or blocks. He never gets to the line. I thought there was a... I would have started Avdia for this team, but there was a thought that uh, maybe Kispert would start, even though it would be horrendous uh, offense. Sorry, defense. But he wouldn't be able to do a huge amount with those other guys around. But now that Calabali is starting, or looks like he is starting, I don't know where the hell Kispert fits. Because Avdia will be a backup to Kuzma and Calabria, I'm guessing. Kispert will get minutes, but 22? Not, not 28. That's hard. I don't know how that will happen. So he's dropped way down. Joe Harris down 89 spots and 82 in minus one. Why? I thought he might be a 10th man in this rotation. But the way that they've moved Jaden Ivey to that bench, the way that Killian Hayes is playing, makes me think they might run like three point guards in the second unit. Burks, Hayes, and the guy that are Monte Morris. And or and Ivy, Jesus Christ, that's too many points. Wow, now now my brain's broken. That's too many guards. Um, yeah, I'm not sure that Harris is going to play. That doesn't impact most leagues. And the other one is Trey Jones, who's down 17 spots. This is because of the uh, Jeremy Sohan point guard situation. I thought Trey would lock in at 31 minutes, and now that I see Sohan that started a point, it doesn't mean that Sohan's going to start in the regular season. Trey Jones may, but it just takes the confidence away from me saying Trey is a 31 minute a night player. I move him to like 30 or 29 because I'm just not certain of how he's going to look. Or how much play... And one thing I said very early on in the preseason with Trey is, remember, they signed him to a backup point guard contract. $11 million a season. They do not have faith in him as a starting point guard. Now, I had lack of faith that Sohan would be unleashed full-time and they should have always made a trade for quickly or Cole Anthony or they should have tried Kobe White or whatever, someone to be a starting point guard. But they absolutely, in my mind, believe that Trey Jones is a backup point guard. Draft him... 10 or 11, sure, but be very cautious with it. It is trending at this point to me in the wrong direction, I think. Let's look at some Yahoo ADP changes. Yahoo has not adjusted their ranks in the last seven days. So we're going to just have a look at what um, what changes have actually gone down in terms of the ADP. Who has risen? Towns has jumped up two spots from number 26 up to number 24. I am... Pretty okay with him at 24. I think we have to be cautious that we are not um, 
that we're not jumping guys up a little bit too far. There is still in some of the fantasy community, and again, I love different opinions. It's good to have those different opinions. Um, but there are still some who believe that he's got top five, top six upside like he was a couple of years ago. And I just vehemently disagree. And him at 24 is is reasonable, I think. Well, no, I don't think. I know it's reasonable to have Towns at number 24. That's totally okay. But that's about the area that he was last season before he got hurt. So it's not like the injury is what killed him. He wasn't doing those things that we that he had done in the past, more in line what I'd projected him to do. Uh, he wasn't doing them because of the guys that were around. So he's at 24 now. So he's rising. Just watch that. A couple of guys that I didn't include here, even though their percentage rise number, which is what I use, was up the top. Luka Doncic and Giannis, they moved up like... His, Doncic's ADP moved up 0.2 and Giannis moved up 0.5. So it's really hard to display that. But it is interesting that Luka is moving up. His ADP is at three, but it's creeping forwards. And someone left... Shout out to the charming legend when I said that I don't think Luka's top four and he called me the... Uh, um, you know, disability slur starting with R without understanding, I guess, how fantasy leagues work or the playoff schedule issue. But Lucas trending up and up and up. And I don't think you should do it. Injury to his quad, injury to his calf, two-game playoff week. These are all concerns, yeah? And his assist rate did drop when Kyrie was there last season. If anything, Lucas should be falling to five or six, not moving up to two. That's weird. Scott Barnes has moved up four spots. Why? I have no idea. His ADP was 54. It's up to 50. He'd been consistently in the mid-50s. His rank, actually, or you know, I know why it is, because they moved his rank up from 50 up to 44 two weeks ago. So the ADP is following the rank. 44 is way too high for me. That ADP of 50 makes no sense. Sabonis so has gone up one spot. His ADP was 17. It's at 16 now. His rank is at 15. You've seen my mock drafts. He goes 13, 14, or 15 in nearly every draft. DeAndre Ayton's moved up three spots. Makes a lot of sense after... The trade, his rank came into 45. His ADP is into 49. So he is trending up. He is a fourth-round player. Nurkic has looked really strong in the preseason. His ADP has moved up six spots. It's still very achievable to get him. Now, remember, a few weeks ago, he was 160th, which I loved highlighting in my sleepers. Go, This is nonsense. He's the starting point guard, uh, starting center for the Blazers, and he's undraftable in 12s. Get your hand off it. That's stupid. Now he has come all the way into his ranking, sits at 99. And that ADP is going to jump into the top 100. He is going to get drafted in the top 100, and I've got no problem with it. And Anthony Simons' numbers are coming in as well. People were just waiting for confirmation that Dane was getting traded. So his rank moved up to 68. His ADP is higher than that. He goes in the 60s of basically every mock draft now. His ADP is up to 67, with just a four-spot rise from where it was um, a week ago. A week ago. Today's episode is brought to you by Better Help. You know that your brain is there to help you, but sometimes it works against us, and sometimes we don't know why or how we can fix it. You know sometimes what you should do, what's good for you to do, but you just can't do it. Therapy can help you figure out what it is that's holding you back, how you can work for yourself with your brain to get the best out of your life. Therapy is something that I've been doing for years now, and it really helps me adjust the way that I view the world, view myself, and try to understand you know, ways to tangibly fix not even fix, tangibly adjust the way that I survive in the world. And I think you, you, if you've got that problem, this is something you can consider as well. If you're thinking of starting therapy though, give BetterHelp a try. It's online, it's convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You fill out a brief questionnaire, matches you with a therapist that fits you, which is one of the most important things when you're starting therapy Uh, anyway. And if you don't find you you get that match or you don't click well, well, you can just change your therapist at no charge. Make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash locked on NBA. That's going to bring us into the next part of it, which we are still looking at Yahoo ADP drops, I believe. Yeah, we are. So, the big fella, am I responsible for this happening? Maybe. Do I care? No. Vooch has dropped down five spots. You know that I am very, very cautious about Vooch. There is the overdraft factor because why he was actually top 10 in totals last season. Yeah, cool. Means absolutely nothing. Take him in the first round then. Means nothing. 
is a year older. His numbers over the final two months of last season plummeted. He was able to maintain the same numbers because he saw an unprecedented seven percentage drop. Not unprecedented, it happens. But he had a seven percentage point rise in, in true shooting percentage while his usage dropped. I think his usage might drop again. Uh, his minutes dropped over the final 30 games of the season. I'm just not willing to, I wasn't willing to take him in round three. Now we are seeing Vooch's numbers move into an area where I am perfectly happy to take him in the 50s. I that is totally reasonable to me. I think it's I think it's good. And we're seeing, of course, ADP following rank. He used to have a rank of 37. It moved to 51. His ADP over the last three weeks has gone 35, 38, 43. This is what happens. ADP follows rank. It just follows rank so much. 43 is bordering on a little too high for me, but it's totally reasonable. 51 is bang on, which is what his rank is. In, at 33 or 34, it made no sense, but he's dropped down five spots. Another one which I've been hammering home was Derek White was too high. He was 63rd a few weeks ago. His rank is 81, but now his ADP has pushed to 83. I think he's around 100. I don't know whether he's going to start or not. I know they're pretty thin in terms of depth, but when he starts on this team, he is the fifth offensive option, and he is the fourth ball handler. I, this just, I love Derek White. It's just not a great scenario for him. Someone gets hurt, sure. But I'm not taking him in in the 80s. And we're seeing his numbers, or in the 70s, where he used to be. He had an ADP of 72 four weeks ago. He's up to 83 now, which is way more reasonable. It needs to drop a little bit more. Fred Van Vliet has fallen down three spots. His ADP was, well, he's ranked, he was ranked 19th on the 18th of September. His ADP is now 28. I, I think he's going to play fewer minutes in Houston than he did in Toronto. But one thing we do need to clear up. Ima Udoka, he's not Nick Nurse. He's not far off Nick Nurse. Look at the Celtics numbers from when he was there. Tatum and Brown played a ton. And Van Vliet might still play a ton. He's not a high usage guy. He wasn't a high usage guy in Toronto. He's not going to be a high usage guy in Houston. I think he's going to play plenty. There's going to be field goal percentage issues for sure. But the trend here of Van Vliet moving to middle second round, third round, sorry, that's, I, I love that. That's really, really good value. So I'm happy if he keeps dropping. The horse, Keldon Johnson down seven spots. His ADP started a few weeks ago at 107. We're down to 121. I don't know that he's going to start, but what I do know is that in category leagues, he's significantly overrated. But if you are at 120 and you're looking for someone who scores, Keldon can do that. He does nothing else. We know this. And points leagues at 121, where his ADP currently sits, it's actually really good value. With the move from Sohan to point guard, that does open up an opportunity for Keldon to start. I didn't know that he was going to. He still may not. But he is moving to me in the right direction. Walker Kessler's also dropped three spots in ADP. I thought for sure that he would rise in the preseason. He had five blocks in that first game and then zero and then I think two. We are banking on big block numbers and I think he's going to lead the league in blocks, but he is one-dimensional and not only is he, well, he's not one-dimensional, he's three-dimensional, but the problem is he's three-dimensional and the others are shithouse. They're not average. That's why I never believed in him as a round two or round three player. He is moving into the zone that I'm way more comfortable with drafting him. And the other one is Keegan Murray, down four spots to 106. He initially was ranked at 116, but Yahoo's bumped him down to 133, and the ADP is following. I've got no problem with him around this ADP of 106, but all my concerns of Keegan have been, can he actually become the third usage guy from being the sixth guy last season? Can he give you anything that isn't threes? Steals, maybe, rebound, assist, block, any of those can come. It's great that he broke the rookie record. means absolutely jack shit for us in fantasy. I expect him to improve this season, but I'm glad that he hasn't like pushed into the 80s or 90s. The falling of four spots is maybe going a little bit far on that. He's at 106, but I think that's I think it's relatively reasonable. ESPN made changes to their rankings. Let's have a look at what actually did change on their rankings. They changed their category and their points league. We're looking at category ranks here. I did a show on points leagues a couple of days ago when talking about do not draft players, and we talked about the adjusted rankings there. Um... Derek Lively's moved up 221 spots. Wow. Took a little bit of time for us to get here. Sometimes that happens. But we're here. We're here now. That's a big jump. He was ranked 384th a week ago. Probably a little bit slow on the uptake. They don't make adjustments very often. When was the last ranking adjustment that ESPN made? Let me look. Uh, on September 18th, Lively was 391. September 25th, he was 384th. So he moved up. Seven spots for some reason. And now he's at 163. He goes in every single 12-team draft, Derek Lively. You draft him in round 11 or 12. 
If he is the starting center, he's I think he's blocking more shots than Walker Kessler in the preseason. He's getting like two blocks a game. And that's useful, especially in the last rounds where you cannot find rebounding players and it is hard to get blocks. He is, he's gone up 221 spots. It's not quite enough. Chet Holmgren's up 27 spots on ESPN. I spoke about him earlier in terms of um, uh, my view on, on where he should uh, move and the fact that I moved him up. So yeah, I'm totally on board with that, uh, with that change there from ESPN. So that's a good, uh, a good adjustment there for, for Chet. I'm just going to bring up where his numbers actually are now. He was 70, he was 85th. Man, that was crazy. Uh, he's at 58th now. I think that he probably comes in from there. He's a fourth round guy. Maybe third would be my guess. Trey Murphy moved up 63 spots. All right. I don't, I don't really know what happened there because they bumped him down to 201st, which was very, very silly. He obviously got hurt. He was initially ranked 97th. Then they moved him to 141. Then they moved him to 201. And now he's down to 138. And literally nothing has changed in between any of that. Nothing. Well, sorry, when he was 97th, he got hurt and then he moved down, but nothing has changed. So I don't get it. I wouldn't take Trey inside the top 100 because of the injury, but he's in a reasonable spot now at 138. Rui Hachimura has moved up 69 spots. He was 239th. He's now 170th. And I'll be fair to Rui. I don't like him as a player. I don't think he's very good as a player, but he has been solid enough in the preseason. More for points leagues and category leagues. He has looked solid. Vanderbilt is out. Rui is almost definitely going to start, but remember what you get from him. It's points, maybe some boards, and not a lot else. And his efficiency is usually all over the place, and his three-pointers are usually very low volume. But if you're in like a 14-team or I like it, if you're in a points league, there's a bit of value in him. Jalen Johnson up 76%. Not 76%, 76 spots. He was 269th. He's still not high enough at 193. I think he should be around 150-ish. I don't know whether he's going to start, but what I do know from watching the preseason is he looks really good. He looks well ahead of where AJ Griffin is. He looks better than Sadiq Bey. Uh, DeAndre Hunter's hurt. I think he has to be drafted, Jalen. It is hard to find enough minutes for him to be useful, but he's doing some things where he's hitting threes or he's blocking shots, and then he's dishing assists. He's doing everything. Um, you've got to grab him. That is what the last rounds are for. It's not for grabbing Contavious Caldwell-Pope. It's for grabbing the upsides. Anthony Edwards moved up five spots. Yeah, we might be getting a little bit too ahead of ourselves here. His ADP is nine on ESPN. Come on. Um, he's up to 13 in their head-to-head ranks. Uh, okay, but it is a big leap to get there, man. And I'm not 100% against it, but it is it is a sizable leap to be able to get to that spot. Let's look at the guys that dropped in their rankings, and they have just reacted swiftly and aggressively to the Miles Turner not Miles Turner, apologies to Miles Turner, to the Miles Bridges arrest news, rightfully so. I do not believe he is draftable in 12-team leagues. I do not believe that he will play this season, but I don't know. They had him 100th, and now he is 299th. That is a 199 spot drop. Fair enough. I don't know that he's going to play. I will be, I was going to say I'd be embarrassed as the Hornets franchise. The correct phrasing would be, I would continue to be embarrassed by the Hornets franchise if he actually is playing for this team. He's down 199 spots. For absolutely no reason whatsoever, they've dropped Contavious Caldwell Pope from 129 to 203. There's nothing that has changed for KCP. The 129, based on a strict ranking and numbers thing, is probably correct. I still wouldn't touch him in most 12-team leagues because of those spots I want some upside, and he doesn't bring it. But I don't really get why he's at 203. And I, nor do I get why they dropped Malik Monk from 151 to 226. What has changed there? If anything... With the Kings, you look at, well, I expect that those key players are going to miss more than the five games they missed last season. So Monk might have an opportunity to do more. And he was still around the 150s around last season anyway. So the rationale to move Malik Monk down to 206, sorry, 226 behind such luminaries as Tim Hardaway and Cam Thomas, it doesn't really sit correct with me. They dropped Mikael Bridges down seven spots. He was at 15. He's down at 22. You know my skepticism of Mikael Bridges in head-to-head leagues, of category leagues. 15 was just way too high. His ADP, interestingly, we're going to talk about him in a second, but his ADP has gone up, but his ranking's gone down. He's at 22 now, which is getting more accurate, I think, for where he should go in a 12-teamer. Cam Thomas had a one big game in the preseason. He's moved down 64 spots because he was ranked at 138. I don't know why. But he was ranked at 138. Now he's at 202, which is probably too high. I don't hate taking a flyer on Cam in case they say have 27 off the bench. 
But again, I, I hear stuff from people who hear stuff as well. I'm not you know, plugged in and talking to Sean Marks, but I know people that are talking to people in the organizations and I lose some faith in the level of patience or leash that they will give him to do what he likes to do, but nobody else likes him to do. And then Dennis Schroeder moved down 54 spots. Why? All right, Dennis, you're the starting point guard. Cool, drop him. What? He was, I think, sitting at a pretty reasonable spot at 124. He's down to 178 now. That means undraftable. That's wrong. You should draft him in a 12-team league. He is most likely a starting point guard in the NBA who's had an ability to be useful in the past. So I don't know why that would have dropped that far, but it has. So that's what we're talking about. Let's look at the changes in ESPN ADP. I talked that Mikael Bridges dropped seven spots in rank. His ADP went up six spots. So what? His ranking, Mikael, was... He was at 15. His ranking is now 22. His ADP was 30. It is now 24. He shouldn't be drafted that high in points leagues. And in category leagues, that 24 is about right. But just interesting to see that change there. I didn't really expect that to be the case. Luka Doncic has moved up one spot on ESPN's ADP as well. Okay, so people are ignoring that playoff schedule. Now, to be fair, ESPN has the worst playoff schedule um, that you could possibly have because they finished the last day of the regular season, which, as we all know, is bordering on um, insane. Well, it's not bordering on it. It is actually insane. So he has had a... um, a jump of one spot. I don't get it. I cannot explain why that has happened. Is it just more people doing drafts and going, well, I know Luca, so let's take him. I, I have to think that's what it is. Now, he was sitting at ADP four. He's now up to three. It should be going the other way. His ranking also come in one spot from six to five. Tyus Jones moved up 11 spots. His ADP was previously 93. It's up to 81. So it's like 11.4 or something he moved up. His ranking's at 67, which is too high. I would say that what I have seen in the preseason about that team would suggest that that 90 area was about right for him. Not a high usage guy with those guys on that team. He's going to be solid in some assist numbers, but I don't think he's worth a sixth round pick. But he's moving up. Weminyama only up three spots. I'm a little surprised. His ADP is now into 25. His ranking's at 41. He will go in the second round of nearly every draft from here on out. It is very hard for a rookie to be a second round player, but we have literally, and I say this with all sincerity, we have literally never seen a player like Victor Wembanyama come into the NBA. We have never seen it, ever. So if you're going to take a flyer on a rookie doing something that is not what we get from rookies, he is probably the guy. The risk you have, I guess is games played because of resting situations. That's probably the the risk. I think there's also going to be a risk with him with efficiency numbers. That will probably be somewhat of a concern too. But he is unbelievable. I was like being, again, cautious on rookies. Like at 31 minutes, I think he's going to do more than that now. I think his usage is going to be way higher than I thought it was going to be as well. And I've got him up in the 30s as well. But he's going in round two most places. Porzingis' ADP has jumped. Why was way too low? It was at 51. It's now at 46. He goes in round three in nearly every draft. So he's coming more to the spot that he should on ESPN. Nothing's really changed. I guess maybe there's a little bit more confidence because he's actually out in the court playing. And then Cam Johnson, not Cam Thomas, Cam Johnson has moved up 10 spots. His ADP is still laughably low. I know he has missed preseason with a hamstring injury, but his ADP is at 103. It was 113. He should go in the 70s in category leagues, 60s in some spots. It is still a gigantic, gigantic bargain to get Cam Thomas at that position. Um, Let's look at the ADP guys on ESPN that have dropped. Jalen Brown, down five spots, the biggest drop of players. Why? I'm, I'm not really sure. I don't really know what's happened to suggest that should be the case. I guess part of it was his ADP was too high at 30. Now it's at 35. He goes in the late 40s routinely in my mock drafts, but he has fallen down five spots, even though they've bumped his ranking from 38 to 36. Kyrie Irving, his ADP has fallen down to 27. His rank has gone from 12 to 17. The groin injury, a little concerning. The two-week playoff schedule, a little concerning. That ADP of 27, it's amazing value though. It's really, really good. If you can get Kyrie Irving round three, you're very happy with it. 
will it happen in most spots? No. But he was routinely going, I saw in most mocks around 13. The, without people really focusing on that two-game week, and then the injury struck, which we just don't know the severity of it. But 27, silly. Lillard's down two spots. He was at around 10 last time. He's at 12 now. But his ranks moved from 9 to 8. So we'll see whether that ADP then follows. That's about fine, though. Like, 12 for Lillard's reasonable. I get it. There's uncertainty how he fits in the team. Brad Beal has seen his ADP drop. Now, his ADP was silly to begin with at 69. That's too low for Bradley Beal. So now it's at 76. So if you are on ESPN and your league mates are drafting off ADP, absolute congratulations because you're getting him in round seven of a 12-team league. Round eight of a 10-team league is larceny. Just be careful because you might get arrested. Ew, that is just silliness. 76, what are we doing? Bam out of bias, dropped three spots. His ADP was 27, it's now 30. Ridiculous. Lillard's not coming there. Bam's value should rise. Not drop. I, I I don't get that. And his rank has improved. It's gone from 31 to 29. He goes in round two of nearly every mock that I do. So I don't know what's happening with drafters over there. That's a question or a statement I could say all the time. And then his teammate, Jimmy Butler, also suffered the same fate. His ranking went from 22 to 20, up two spots, but his ADP went from 27 to 30. Lillard's not there. So why is Butler and Bam dropping down draft boards now? Jimmy Butler at 30 is ridiculous. As much as I'm not like, well, Jimmy's actually a top 10 player, I'm not that guy. He's not the 30th guy. He should go in round two. Back start of round three, not back end round three. So that's the change. I'm not going to do changes in Fantrax ADPs because they're all over the place and they don't actually make any sense. But what I will mention, and I'm, I've got to be fair, I promote Fantrax a lot. I do, right? Because I do believe it is by far the best platform. But sometimes they do stuff with their rankings that is absolute nonsense, and I'll call it out. They have put in some projections now which are foolish. Be really cautious about trusting them. I'll go through a couple off the top of my head. They've got Steph Curry projected to hit 5.7 threes per game. They've got Bradley Beal projected to average over 29 points per game. Yeah, they've got Jaden Springer projected to average two steals per game. They've got Dayron Sharp projected to lead the league in rebounds. They have Isaiah Jackson projected to block 3.1 shots per game. They have Josh Minot, who you might ask. Exactly. I know who Josh is, but a lot of you won't. Projected to average 1.9 steals and 1.8 blocks per game. They have Christian Coloco projected for over two blocks per game. They have Tyrese Halliburton projected for seven assists per game. And we can have quibbles about levels of projection, whatever. You, I might say Beal might average 24. You might say 22. I might say that Zach Levine averages 28. You might say 25. But it's all within the realms of possibility. I don't know how you justify um, Josh Minot being the best defensive player in the history of the world, getting two steals, two blocks per game. How do you get to that? How do you get Dayron Sharp back up center to lead the league in rebounds? You can't. So be really cautious. Because some of those things are just... Per 36 projections turned into those guys starting and playing 30 minutes a night. Springer, Minot, Isaiah Jackson, Coloco, Sharp. There's someone else that had the crazy to project to be the third best rebounder in the, in the NBA. Someone who just isn't going to play. But then there's the, why is Steph going to hit six threes a game? Why is Beal averaging 29? And why is Halliburton getting seven assists? Which I don't understand. So be really cautious looking at those projections. I will call out the nonsense of ESPN's projections when Giannis was projected to average 43 points a game. I'll call out the projections on Yahoo where they had Anthony Simons projected for, or sorry, Donovan Mitchell projected to hit 400 more two-pointers this season, but go to the line fewer times than the season before. I'll call all that stuff out because it's clearly wrong. And Fantrax's projections at the moment, there are a lot of things that are very wrong. Be very discerning with the numbers that you look at. Do the projections even mean anything in terms of their ranks? No, because Josh Minot with 1.9 steals and 1.8 blocks is ranked 360th. So again, their rankings have nothing to do with their stat projections, which is one of the biggest red flags you should find when looking at those things. This is great for me because I have meticulous attention to detail in my own projections. I will get things wrong every year. 100% always, but not like that. Follow this podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. And if you are on YouTube, thumb it up and leave your comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.